Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss a very important topic that is diabetic nephropathy. That is renal changes seen in diabetes mellitus. And you usually get a long question on this topic, so you cannot afford missing it. So let's start the topic. We are starting the topic that is diabetes nephro diabetic nephropathy so first of all i will let you know the introduction what do you mean by diabetic nephropathy then we will see the morphology in the morphology we will see three structures are involved in kidney number one the glomerulus number two the blood vessels number three the tubules so the three things which are involved in the histology of a kidney we will discuss the changes in them so the changes in the glomerulus are of two pattern diffuse glomerulus, glomerulus sclerosis and nodular glomerulus sclerosis and we will understand them so let's start the topic so you know there are three type of glomerulonephritis the primary secondary and hereditary where is diabetic nephropathy is belonging is it primary or secondary or hereditary yes so diabetic nephropathy is a type of secondary glomerular disease in which the main disease is the diabetes mellitus and secondarily there is renal involvement leading to diabetic nephropathy so it is a type of secondary systemic glomerular disease among the primary there are nine type of glomerulonephritis diabetes is not coming in that but among the secondary there are many one of them is diabetic nephropathy so you must understand it first that whatever topic we are studying right now that is diabetic nephropathy it is a type of secondary glomerular disease in which the what do you mean by secondary the main disease is the diabetes mellitus and secondarily there is renal involvement leading to diabetic nephropathy so renal involvement is the common complication of diabetes mellitus it is not the uh, main disease the main disease is the diabetes mellitus and the renal involvement is the secondarily as seen as a complication you know what is diabetes mellitus whenever there is increased glucose level in the blood it is known as diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is a group of metabolic disorder having a common feature of hyperglycemia what do you mean by hyperglycemia hyper means more glycemia means sugar so if there is increased glucose or increased sugar in the blood it is known as diabetes mellitus so there are two type of diabetes diabetes type 1 diabetes type 2 renal involvement can occur in both of them it is more common in type 1 as compared to type 2 so this is the blood vessel of a human being i am drawing this person is diabetic whether type 1 or whether type 2 so the summary is that whether it is type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes the person is having high glucose level in the blood so this is the glucose the person is having high glucose level in the blood as compared to normal so is there any harm if the glucose level in the blood is more what is the problem in that the problem is that this high level of the glucose can lead to end organ damage one of the important organ is the kidney this high glucose level you can see here the high glucose level it will go inside the kidney and can cause damage to the kidney now inside the kidney we are having one million nephron in each kidney so in the nephron glomerulus is there blood vessels are there and tubules are there so this increased glucose level increased glucose level in the blood damages the glomerulus also blood vessels also and tubules also and together the changes in the kidney it is known as diabetic nephropathy so what i am teaching you right now i am teaching you a topic that is diabetic nephropathy in diabetic nephropathy the kidney is involved secondarily to hyperglycemia so the person is having diabetes mellitus because of which there is high glucose level in the blood and that high glucose level is coming to the kidney chronically for years 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 and it is causing damage to the kidney it is causing damage to the three things glomerulus blood vessels and tubules of the kidney and together the disease is known as diabetic nephropathy it is more commonly seen in type 1 diabetes as compared to type 2 diabetes so this is the introduction so what is diabetic uh, nephropathy it is a disease in which the kidney is involved secondarily to the diabetes more common in type 1 as compared to type 2 we have already seen now let's start the morphology as i told you the three structures are involved in kidney what are the three structures involved in the kidney number one glomerulus number two blood vessels and number three tubules these are the three things which are involved in a kidney in the glomerulus there are two pattern diffuse and nodular it is known as diffuse and nodular glomerulus sclerosis so let me explain you the first glomerular changes then we will see the blood vessels then the tubules so what changes occurs in the glomerulus we will discuss one of the two pattern occur in in different patients in some patient diffuse glomerulus sclerosis occur in some patient nodular glomerulus sclerosis occur diffuse is more common nodular is less common so we will see morphologically what is the difference between them now see the diagram first i am telling you the diffuse glomerulus sclerosis have a look on the diagram can you see a glomerulus so in both these glomerulus sclerosis the high line will get deposited but at where 
is it diffusely deposited or it is in the form of the nodules that will decide the pattern so here the hyaline is deposited at four places in diffuse glomerulosclerosis the hyaline hyaline get deposited at four places inside the glomerulus so can you see a glomerulus where is the hyaline deposition in that number one the hyaline is deposited in the basement membrane of the capillaries so the capillaries basement membrane get thickened can you see all these capillaries in all these capillaries the basement membrane is thickened it is more pink so number one there is thickening of the basement membrane that is the earliest finding because of hyaline deposition in that number one number two it is deposited in the form of the cap of the capillary can you see this capillary have a pink color cap this capillary also have a pink color cap can you see this capillary also have a pink color cap so this is known as fibrin cap fibrin cap in the wall of the capillary in the peripheral wall of the capillary it is in the form of a cap a homogeneous pink color material that is again highlighted number 2 number 3 it is deposited in the mesangium can you see the filler space that is mesangium in this filler space can you see the pink color a cellular pink color uh, eosinophilic material that is highlighted so this is the hyaline is deposited in the mesangium so mesangial deposits are there mesangial number 3 and number 4 can you see the bowman's capsule so in the bowman's capsule can you see this pink pink deposit in the bowman's capsule can you see this pink deposit in the bowman's capsule so it is deposited in the bowman's capsule also it is known as capsular drop so what are the four places it is deposited you can see the same in this diagram also so here in diffuse glomerulosclerosis hyaline get deposited at four places what four places number 1 there is thickening of the basement membrane number 1 thickening of the basement membrane of the capillary number 2 the wall of the capillary have the cap can you appreciate a cap here number 2 number 3 it is in the mesangium the filler space mesangium and number 4 it is in the <coughs> bowman's capsule it is there in the bowman's capsule so these are the four places at which it is deposited diffuse glomerulosclerosis so in diffuse there are two type of glomerulosclerosis we will see diffuse glomerulosclerosis and nodular glomerulosclerosis so hyaline get deposited here hyaline get deposited at four places what are the four places number 1 the basement membrane number 2 the wall of capillary wall of capillary in the form of cap number 3 in the mesangium and number 4 in the bowman's capsule bowman's capsule so these are the four places in nodular glomerulosclerosis here also hyaline get deposited but only in the form of the small small nodules it is not at four places so let me show you the next one so the next one is the nodular glomerulosclerosis here the hyaline is deposited in the form of the nodule see the diagram where is hyaline can you see the glomerulus the hyaline is deposited in the form of the small small nodule it is not there in the basement membrane it is not there in the mesangium it is not there in the bowman's capsule it is not there in the fibrin cap it is in the form of the nodules small small lobules which are known as nodules the nodules are spherical or oval in shape they are laminated in the form of the laminated layers they are arranged i mean the hyaline is deposited in the form of the laminated layers the circular concentric layers it is hyaline a cellular mass and pass positive so it is in the form of the nodules now here also you can see the hyaline is deposited in the form of the nodules the pink color hyaline get deposited in the form of the nodules so we can compare the both so in both of them the hyaline is deposited but in diffuse it is deposited at four places in hyal in nodular one it is deposited only at one place that is in the form of the nodules that's why this one is known as diffuse this one is known as nodular so now you have to understand one more thing this one is diffuse this one is nodular both of them are glomerulosclerosis diffuse glomerulosclerosis nodular glomerulosclerosis i told you here hyaline deposited at four places you know which four places here hyaline deposited only at one place that is in the form of small small nodules that's why known as nodular which is more common so this one is more common diffuse one and nodular one is less common if you talk about the incidence the diffuse one is more common and nodular one is less common but if i ask you which is more specific so nodular one is more specific this one is more specific this one is less specific so if i ask you more specific or characteristic so answer is nodular one so more common is the diffuse one but more specific or more characteristic is the nodular one please don't forget to learn the other name of the nodular it is known as kimmelston wilson kidney it is also known as here i have not written it it is known as kimmelston wilson kidney kimmelston kimmelston wilson kidney kimmelson wilson kidney it is also known as kw kidney or kimmelson wilson kidney that is more specific so that is the glomerulus we have seen in in both of them now let's see the vascular changes what happens in the blood vessel what happens in the blood vessel in the blood vessel also hyaline get deposited in the media you know the blood vessels have three layer intima 
media and external. So here also hyaline get in both of them. In both of them. Now glomerulus is different in both of them. Where is the blood vessel? Can you appreciate here is the blood vessel? And here is the blood vessel. Appreciate the media of both of them. Here, see the media, this one. Here, see the media, this one. Can you see the pink color material deposit in media in both of them? Here also the pink deposit, pink acellular deposit in the media. Here also pink acellular deposit in the media. So basically, highline thickening of the arteriole, highline thickening of the arteriole is a common feature of both of them. There is no difference in the blood vessel. In both the things, in both the pattern, the blood vessel involvement is same. That is highline arteriosclerosis. Finally, coming on the tubules. Have a look on the tubules in both of them. Where are the tubules? This one is glomerulus. Glomerulus is different. This one is glomerulus. This one is glomerulus. This pattern is different, but the blood vessel is same. Now coming on the tubules. So I can see these are the tubules over here. PCT, DCT. It can be loop of Hanley. It can be collecting duct. So I can see these are the tubules over here. The same I can see the tubules over here. Now can you see the pattern, the changes in the tubules in these? What is the changes in the tubules in this in these? Now, any of these tubules in both of them, if you see the cells of the tubules, if you appreciate the cells of the tubules, the cells of the tubules contain the vacuoles inside them. If you see the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm of the cells of the tubules contain vacuoles inside them. These are the glycogen vacuoles. So the tubules contain the vacuoles, which is in the form of the glycogen deposits. The glycogen deposits appear as vacuoles, and this is known as Armani Eves transition. So, Armani Eastern lesion is common in both of them. So, I hope you got it correctly. So, we have seen the three type of changes in diabetic nephropathy. Let me summarize diabetic nephropathy. So, first I will write and then I will show you in the diagram. So, I am teaching you a topic diabetic nephropathy. Okay. That is involvement of the kidney in diabetes mellitus. Okay. Now, there are two patterns. You must understand two patterns. Diffuse glomerulosclerosis and nodular glomerulosclerosis. So, you have to tell me the glomerulus in both of them. You have to tell me the blood vessels, blood vessels, vascular changes in both of them. And you have to tell me the tubules involvement in both of them. So, glomerulus is different. Okay. Here, hyaline get deposited at four places. And here, hyaline is deposited only in the form of the nodules. Okay. Here, hyaline deposited at four places. What are the four places? It is in the form of the basement membrane, capillary wall in the form of the fibrin cap, in the Bowman's capsule, and in the mesangia. Okay, that's why it is known as diffuse. Now, which is more common? So, this one is more common. But which is more specific? So, this one is more specific or more characteristic. There is a other name given to nodular glomerulosclerosis, also known as kimmelson wilson kidney. You should love that. Now, coming on the blood vessels. Blood vessel here also show highline arteriosclerosis. Here also highline arteriosclerosis. Coming on the tubules. Here also tubules show armani Ebstern lesion. Here also tubules show armani Ebstern lesion. That is the cells of the tubules show vacuoles which is due to excess glycogen. So rather than writing and mugging up, why don't we draw it? Why don't we draw it? So let's draw it. So let's draw the diabetic nephropathy in my university exam. I am drawing it. So I will draw two boxes like this. So here I will try to draw the diffuse one. Here I will try to draw the nodular one. Nodular glom diffuse glomerulosclerosis, nodular glomerulosclerosis, nodular also known as Kimmelson Wilson kidney. I will write like this. Now I will draw a glomerulus over here. This is the Bowman's capsule. And I will draw a glomerulus over here. This is the Bowman's capsule I am drawing. And these are the multiple capillaries over here. These are the multiple capillaries over here. Now I will do the hyaline deposition. Here I will do hyaline deposition at four places. Number one, in the wall of the capillary, in the basement membrane, in the wall of the capillary, in the mesangium everywhere in the mesangium and in the Bowman's capsule also, in the Bowman's capsule. So I will do the hyaline. What is hyaline? Pink color eosinophilic acellular mass. Here I will deposit the hyaline in the form of the nodules, in the form of the nodules. So that is diffuse versus nodular. Now I will draw the blood vessel in both of them. So here also I will draw the blood vessel intima media. Here also I will draw the blood vessel intima and media. So I will deposit the hyaline in media in both of them. Hyaline arteriosclerosis, hyaline arteriosclerosis. That is same. Now I will draw the tubules. I will draw few tubules over here, few tubules over here. So these are the cells of the tubules. Okay, these are the cells of the tubules. Okay, now in their cells of the tubules, I will show the vacuoles, big, big vacuoles. And I will label it as Armani Eves transition. What are these vacuoles? The vacuoles is due to excess glycogen. This is Armani Ebstern, Armani Ebstern. That is common in both of them. This is highline arteriosclerosis, highline arteriosclerosis. This is both of them, common in both of them. But the glomerulus is different. So I hope the concept is crystal clear. You should be able to draw it in your exam rather than mugging up. 
so that's all about it now if long question is coming for diabetic uh, nephropathy write down everything and if short question is coming on any one of them, write down that specifically. Don't forget to see the previous year university exam question which are asked in various universities from this topic which are given in the question bank as well as notes section. You will become confident after that. Believe me. Thank you so much.